Following up on our coverage of an incident that happened on the Charlottesville Downtown Mall on December 28th, we have an update. In this video, you can see a white male wielding a knife standing over a black man down on his hands and knees. The white male suspect points the knife at the man on his knees and calls him a murderer and continues this behavior for over two minutes before police finally show up and apprehend the suspect. Was it recent? Yes. Sir, we need your help here. Don't reach in your pocket. This right here. Step over here. Step over here. I don't have any other weapon. Step over here. Now, the video was originally posted on social media by Dawid Bey Muhammad. And in his video description, Muhammad claims that the man holding the knife is a white supremacist. So we immediately became interested in the case and I headed over to Charlottesville, Virginia to get some answers. After interviewing several people that knew the suspect, most who were African American, and identifying the suspect, I had no reason to believe that he was a white supremacist or that this was a hate crime. If you listen to the video, he doesn't use any racial slurs during the alleged assault on this poor man on the ground. Then I watched an interview of the suspect's mother on a local channel and it is clear that this man has mental health and substance abuse issues. Does that excuse what he did? Absolutely not. But I have no reason to believe that this was a crime that was racially motivated or that the suspect, James Benjamin Jarrett, known around town as Benji, is a racist. There's just no evidence there to prove that. However, after speaking to several black Americans that are still irate about the video, they told me the system is racist. The way that law enforcement reacts to a black suspect is often different than how they would react to a white suspect in similar circumstances. Okay. But will kill an unarmed black suspect, or even worse, a black child, within seconds of encountering them. Um, black male, maybe 20, on um, black revolver, black handgun. Tamir Rice, who was 12 years old, died later in hospital. According to an August 28th report included in a Washington Post article that compiled data from killedbypolice.net, the website Fatal Encounters, and several other sources, in 2014 and 2015, African Americans made up 50% of unarmed suspects that were killed by police officers. Only 25% of the unarmed suspects killed by police were white. The other 25% were Latino. Now these are just the statistics for unarmed people that were shot and killed by police officers in 2014 and 2015. If accurate, an unarmed black suspect is twice as likely to be killed by police than an unarmed white suspect. So there is definitely evidence that police officers overall treat black suspects differently than white suspects. The question is, was that at play here? We just don't know. Another thing that bothered black people about this incident is that they think white suspects with mental health issues receive quicker access to the resources needed to treat those illnesses than black suspects do with mental illnesses. And one woman even claims that oftentimes blacks are not even given any access to mental health screening after an arrest. This stance too has credence. All you have to do is look at news articles. Shooters or violent offenders of color are called terrorists or thugs, but white mass shooters and violent offenders are called mentally ill. We could go on and on all day about why videos like this upset people of color. I could cite study after study, but I will not go there. They, or shall I say we, have a right to be upset about these things and much more. In conclusion, I do not have any evidence that the man in this video with the knife is a racist and a white supremacist. What he did was disturbing and appears to be illegal. He has been charged and will go through the court process and the legal system. I will continue to follow this case, but he will not be labeled a white supremacist here on Breaking Through because as I've said, there is no evidence to suggest that he is. In Charlottesville, Theodore Whitelow, Breaking Through News.